Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings and greetings be unto each and every one of you on this Friday, April 12, 2024, as we gather on this night for prayer. We thank God for the opportunity to be together to pray, to lift our concerns to Almighty God, to have a little talk with him and just bring and just let the issues of our hearts just flow out to the Lord. And so we thank God for all that uh, for God, that God has done. God has brought us to this Friday. God has allowed us to make it to this moment in time. He's allowed us to see this day that we've never seen before and that we'll never see again. And so that alone is the reason to give God thanks and praise. So our prayer service uh, tonight, we're going to pray and we're going to have scripture be read and broken down to us as, as well tonight. So we're going to get straight into it, but we always, be, we always begin our prayer services in a moment of silence. Why? Because it is during this intimate time of prayer that Satan likes to come and interrupt. It was on that mount, it was on that, it was in the wilderness rather, that as Jesus was praying and fasting, that Satan came and inter and, and came and, and, and interrupted or, or, or tried to get Jesus off track or tried to get tried to get Jesus off track and, 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 and was and tempted Jesus. And so we ask God that God will remove any distraction, any hindrance. Anything that the, the devil would try to put in put put now to get us off track, we pray, Lord, keep our attention on you. That's, and so and so we ask that tonight at this time as we open up in a moment of silence. Let's do that at this time. Amen. Amen. People of God, we gather this night in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We are illumined by the brightness of his rising. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Death has no more dominion over us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sang to God, most holy, most worthy, with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of light, the universe proclaims your glory. Glory be unto the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. People of God, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. And a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet, and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. With all your creatures, we give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. People of God, let's turn our attention to our psalm for tonight, Psalm chapter 4. At this time, again, that's Psalm chapter 4. Psalm chapter 4. And the word of the Lord reads this way. The New King James Version is on your screen. You may have another version. Praise the Lord. Uh, Psalm, Psalm chapter 4. It reads this way. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? Selah. 
but know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good. Lord, lift the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increase. I will both lie down in peace and sleep for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Here is the reading of God's holy word. People of God, the book of Psalms, of course, is the hymn book of the Bible. And um, the, and the, the Psalms have many various writers, just like the songs that we have today. And But a, a, a lot of it is written by David. And this Psalm is a Psalm of David as well. Um, people of God, in this Psalm, David is going through a very interesting point in his life. His son Absalom is trying to kill him, get rid of him because, uh, because he wants to have the kingdom. Um, and so he's trying to overthrow his father's kingdom. And all, of, and, and all of that is taking place. He's trying to overthrow his father's kingdom. And what happens when he does with that? David writes this psalm. And he, and he writes a few others during that time. But he writes this psalm. Um, and he writes this psalm. He writes this psalm. And he, and, he, and he says, hear me when I call God of my righteousness. Whoever leads me in my distress. He asks God to hear him. You know, in, in, our, in, in those stressful situations, even as his own son was turning against him, even when our own family turns against us, even when we don't always, you know, get along with family or family members seem, you know, to, to, to family members seem to, uh, we seem to have strife with them. We remember people of God that, you know, in all of those situations of life, we should be calling on the Lord. We should be asking God to have mercy on us and to hear our prayer. That no matter what goes on in our lives, that David is a good example to show us that we need to call upon the Lord. Now, did David always call upon the Lord in every situation? No, there were times, no, where he, out of fear, he just did anything. There were times out of fear, especially when he ran to the Philistine camp, all right? When, it, when he ran to the Philistine camp, people of God, in another experience in his life. So that, so, so David was not a perfect man, no. But David David was a, is a good example of showing us that when we, when we have distress, or when there's a situation, we should call on God. When David ran to the Philistine camp, the Philistines were great enemies of Israel. And so D David tried to hide out and act as if he wasn't a part. And when they brought David, when they brought David up, he acted like a madman. He acted like the madman because so that they could let him go and so that they could let him go and not kill him. He acted like a madman. But people of God, so David, sometimes he didn't, you know, always didn't see God. Sometimes he did some interesting things. He ran to enemy territory, the Philistines, um, when, uh, when he was dealing with Saul and all, when he was dealing with all of that. So listen, listen, people of God, he wasn't always, he wasn't always, you know, he didn't always do what was right. But he's a good example of showing us that when we are in trouble, we should call to the cry to the Lord. All right. So we thank God for that. Let's go forth now at this time to to the epistle of John, 1st John at this time, the epistle of John, 1st John, all right, 1st John, and uh, I, I hope, I hope people of God that you will be with me in this because we are going to see what God is saying to us tonight through this text, all right, 1st John chapter 3 verses 1 to 3, 1st John chapter 3 verses 1 to 3, here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And the word of the Lord reads this way. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Here, here is the reading of God's holy word. People of God, well, we're in the epistle 
And the epistle just means letter. So whenever you see epistle, E-P-I-S, E-P-I-S-T-L-E, again, E-P-I-S-T-L-E, whenever you see that word epistle, it just means letter. So this, this, the writer of this book or this letter um, never mentions his name, but, 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 but since earlier on in the church, many have believed that it was written by the apostle John, who was one of Jesus' disciples and one of the apostles of the early church. People of God, the, uh, the apostle John wrote the gospel of John. He wrote first, second, and third John. And he also wrote, uh, he also wrote the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. And so, and so John is a very a key figure. And um, in this book, because all of the books in the Bible, believe it or not, have a theme, all right? They all have a theme. And I believe that in order for you to get it the way it was intended, you need to know what the theme of the book was and the background of the book. That's our problem when we read the Bible. Nobody looks at background and nobody looks at culture. And so we just assume. See, that, 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 that's not what we want to be. We don't want to assume now. We want to make sure that we have it the way it was it's supposed to be get, um, supposed to be had. And so 1 John chapter 3, um, in, in, this particular, in this particular epistle, 1 John, uh, he emphasizes that Jesus is God. He also, and he, uh, he also, John also notes the importance of following God and to not only follow God, but obeying him. And he very much emphasized that we ought to live lives of holiness and to not have uh, lives corrupt with sin. He also warns against false teachers. All right. And it is believed people. it is, you know, it is not known to whom it was written, but some assume that um, that it, that he wrote to the um, where he ministered a lot, um, Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. So his whole goal and his whole focus of writing this book is to tell people to live godly lives. Jesus is God, live godly lives, and stay away from false teachers. The whole point of the book is fellowship. Fellowship with God. If you really believe that Jesus is God, if you really believe that, you'll obey him. You, you, you won't stay in the way of sin. That's the whole point of the book, all right? You won't stay in the way, way of sin. That's the whole point of the book. So, and so this particular, this particular chapter, it talks about how we are children of God, all right? Once again, that theme of fellowship. We are fellowshipping or, commu or, or having community with God. How? Because we are what? Children of God. So people of God, in this particular chapter, we are, in, we, 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 we are taught that we are children of God. And then later on, it tells us that we ought to love one another. But in this particular portion, he starts out the chapter with saying, behold. Behold, 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 which means look at, look at, look at, pay close attention to. Behold, look at what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Uh, he, 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 he points us to look at the love that God the Father has for us, has bestowed upon us. Bestowed upon us means placed upon us. The love that God has placed upon us. Now, I, I you know, I love that. I love the way that that used that, the, the way that those words work in that particular part of this, of this chapter. Why do I love the way those words work? Because it says the love the Father has bestowed on us. You see, the love that God has placed on us. You see how that is? He placed his love on you. He, he placed his love on you. That and we should be called the children of God. Now, that's amazing right there that God loved us so much. He placed his love upon miserable, raggedy, dirty people and he made them his children. What kind of stuff is this uh, that he makes us his children? And we're not talking about some person off the street and we're not talking. We're not talking about some human, some human or some flesh. We're talking about the most high God calls us as Christians, his children. What, what, what kind of love is that? What, what kind of God is this that he wants to have that kind of intimate relationship with us and call us his child? He doesn't see, he, he, he doesn't, he, he does, he doesn't see us as, you know, he doesn't see us as, you know, just some something, something that he created and then he just neglects us. No, he sees us as his children. Lord have mercy. And usually when you have a child, you know, it usually, I say usually, usually when you have a child, you want to take care of that child and help that child and provide for that child and have an intimate, close relationship with that child. So the father, the father has bestowed on us 
his children his love and wants to have an intimate close personal relationship with him well how did that happen people of god when jesus died on the cross we became the children of god there was a wedge between our relationship with god and what was that wedge sin lord have mercy did i say sin i said sin sin was that wedge between us and between god and when jesus died on the cross Jesus allowed us to be called children of God. Lord have mercy. Uh, John 1 12 says uh, uh, the gospel, the gospel of John 1, it says that he came to his own and to that and he came to his own and his own received him not. Ah, but to as many who have received him, he has given the power to become the sons of God. And that's that's John chapter 1, verses tw- uh, uh, 11 to 12, people of God, that he came to his own and his own received him not. But to as many who have received him he has given the power to become the sons of God we are the children of God why because of our belief in Christ he wants an intimate relationship with us and because we and because God is our father because he is our daddy see because we are his children because we belong to him because we are who God made us to be and be, and because and because we are his children the world does not know us because it didn't know him because we belong to God the world does not know us we should expect we should not we should not go in clueless we should expect to for the world to treat us badly because it treated God badly when he came down to earth in Jesus. We should expect the world not to know us, not to want anything to do with us. And no does not mean to act as if they're clueless about who Christians are. No, 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 they're not clueless. The world doesn't know us. The world doesn't want to be around us, doesn't want to know us, doesn't want to know us personally doesn't want to doesn't want to associate with us because it did not want to associate with him so why are you trying to be over there why are you trying to fit in with them people and they don't care nothing about you they not listen to me well, 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 listen listen they don't they don't care nothing about you why are we so hooked and fat and, and, and fixated on relationships and certain things when god said you're my child why are you trying to be hanging over there with the devil anyway I'm almost finished. You're my child. You're my child. The Bible clearly says, it clearly illustrates that the devil is the God of this world. So why are you mingling with the world when their God is the devil? I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is. The world does not know. Why do we want to be liked by them so badly? When you are a child of God, you're called to be peculiar, for you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why would I waste my time trying to please you or trying to have an association with you when I've been called to be a child of God? And it's not because of me. It's because of the love of the Father. And if he loves me that bad, I've got to love him back and live for him and dedicate my life to him i I have to beloved verse number two now that we are children of god and it has yet not been revealed what we shall be but we know that when he is revealed we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is uh he says beloved beloved means that you are loved by god and and john is also saying that he loves you but most importantly god loves you beloved we are now called children of god all of us as believers And I want you to watch that word. Now we are called children of God. Before you got saved, you weren't a child of God. Do I need to say that scripture again? He came to his own and his own received him not, but to as many who have received him. He has given the power to become the sons of God. So if you receive him, he bestowed the love, he bestowed it, but it's up to you to receive. Yes. Yes. Do you mean I have to say yes? You have to yield. Yes, you have to yield. Yes. 
Yes, yes, that's how that works. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Beloved, now we are children of God. Before I was saved, I wasn't a child of God. I was I, I, I was born alienated from God. I was born in sin, and in sin did my mother conceive me. I was born in sin, and I was shaping in iniquity. I, I Nothing in this, nothing in me wanted God, nothing in me. The, the Holy Ghost had to intervene, and the Holy Ghost had to interrupt some patterns. Lord, have mercy. And then, and then, and then it came to my mind and said, if he loved me like that, I got to love him back and I accept it. So now am I a child of God? Now am I a legitimate child of the king? And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. We are the children of God, but it doesn't appear what we shall be. We are in the flesh now. We are sinning saints. We are not perfect. We are not perfect. We are not perfect. Lord, have mercy. And this hints at that, that we will never be perfect in this life. You, you, you will, I know there are people and there are even sects of Christianity that will tell you that you can be perfect in this life. It is not possible to be perfect. You are living in flesh. You are, Did I tell you that? You are living in flesh. And if we believe the Bible, the Bible says in this flesh lieth no good thing. Did you hear that? So this, so, so, so there's nothing good about this flesh. So we're children of God, but it does not yet appear what we shall be. Right now, I'm a sinning saint. Right now, I'm a sinning saint. I love the Lord, and every day he's scrubbing me. He's cleaning me. Lord, have mercy. But uh, but it does not yet appear what I shall be. Lord, have mercy. Uh, every day, he's making me more like him. Every day, he's making me more like him. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. When I die and go to heaven, I'm going to be like him. When I die and see Jesus, I'm going to be like him. Him. I will not have to be worried. I don't have to worry about the suffering of life. I, I'll now be pure and I'll now be holy. And I'll finally, I'll finally see him face to face. I'll be like him. I'll be holy. I'll see my Lord in purity. I'll be gone of raggedy flesh. And I'll see my Lord face to face when he is revealed, when he comes and takes me home to live with him in heaven, I will be like I will, for we shall see him as he is. We shall see him in heaven as he is. Some scholars say that this is also talking about the rapture when Christ will come back for his church and, and, and the bodies of those who sleep in him will reconnect with their spirits. But people of God, and people of God, we, we people of God, we thank God that even when we die, or even, even when we die, people of God, we're going to be like him. We're going to be holy and we're going to be pure, all right? We're going to be holy and we're going to be pure, all right, when we get to heaven. That's the only place it will happen. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So if we know we're children of God and that it does not yet appear what we shall be, if we know that, then we will purify ourselves. Everybody who has that hope, believing in God, knowing that you're a child of God and that every day he's working on you, preparing you for heaven. You are not going to be perfect till you get there, but every day he's working on you and he's pulling taste out of your mouth and he's scrubbing and taking that out and, and making you more like him. You purify yourself. You, you put yourself in line and in order. And so you purify myself. It literally means people of God purify myself. It literally means I make myself guilt. I, 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 I purify myself. It means guiltless, blameless, or innocent behavior. I purify myself. There's a certain way I live this thing. If I know that I have a God that loved me so much that he, that, that, that he made me his child. And it's not because of anything that I've done, but because of the finished work of Calvary and that every day he's scrubbing me and it does not yet appear what I shall be. Right now I may be in flesh, but it doesn't appear what I shall be. Because one day I'm going to see him face to face and I'm going to be like him and I'm going to see him as he is. 
and everyone, and if I have this hope in me, I'm going to purify myself. I am going to live a certain way. I am going to pattern my life a certain way because I have this hope in me that I am a child of God and that I'm going to be like him and that I'm going to see him face to face. Because I have this hope in me, there's a certain way I pattern myself. Because I have this hope in me, there's a certain way I live. Because I have this hope in me, there's a certain way I act among other people. Because I have this hope in me, there's a certain way I walk and I talk and I, and I go about doing business for my king. There's a certain way. So we purify ourselves. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. And we won't be perfect until we get to heaven. What he asks of us is that we try our best to live for him. What he wants from you is your heart. And in essence, he wants all of you. He wants your life. He wants your devotion, your time. He's not expecting perfection. He knew you were flesh when he called you. But he's asking you, do you really want me? And if you really want me, and if you really believe that you're a child of God, not because of your works, but because of what Christ did for you and the love the father had for sending Christ so that you could be reconciled back to him. We didn't make the first move. He did. <laughs> when he sent Christ for our sake, he made the first move. He took on what we deserved, the punishment, the guilt. Jesus Christ, he took all of that on so that we could call God Father, Abba Father. And we thank God. We thank God. So if we know this, there's a certain way we pattern our lives. We don't make any decision without him. We don't do this or that without him. And even in our mistakes and our flaws, we say, Lord, help me. Help purge this out. Purge this out. Cleanse me clean me. And I had to make a constant, constant decision and choice. I'm not going to do this anymore. Because it's not that, it's not that he's just going to drop it out of heaven. And then I'm instantly just going to be, it's instantly just going to be cleaned up. No, 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 no. I have to want to do the work. So Lord, help me to purify my, it says, did you not see the text? It says, everyone who has this hope purifies himself. You got to do this yourself. Yes, the Holy Ghost, God is going to help you but you have to want to do the work yourself. If you have this hope, there's something in you that'll say, I got to do this. I love that thing, but I love you more. I love that, but I love you more. I love that, but I love you more. I love that, but I love you more. There's something in you that turns over and says, if you love me like that, and if I believe that I am saved now, but it doesn't appear what I shall be, there's a certain way I have to respond to that. There's a certain way I have to ex exclaim that. There's a certain way I have to show that. So we're going to close out tonight in prayer asking for God to have his way in our lives, to keep this hope in front of us, that we would purify our lives, devote them to his service and to his mission. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you tonight for your kindness. Hey, glory. Thank you for your sovereignty. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your omniscience, you knowing everything before it even happens. Thank you for your omnipresence. You are everywhere at one time. Thank you, God, that you are the great I am. Thank you, God, that you are the most high God. And there is no other God higher than you. There may be other little gods out there that think they lost, that they think they got it going on. But Lord, you are the true and the living God. You are the only God. The only true and living God. All other, all other, all other things that try to contend with you have to bow down to you. You rule and you reign forever. You are God. 
And can't nobody get in your place or be you but you. For you are the only God. And so we celebrate that tonight. And that's why we do not bring our sorrows, our petitions, our cries, our doubts, our worries, our fears to any of the thing, one, or substance because we know that you are God. You are the only God that'll work it out. You said, Jesus, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And you still say to us through your word, God, draw nigh and I will draw nigh to you. We thank you, God. That, Lord, in this time of prayer, we just want to get close to you. We just want to get close to you. We want to speak to you, and we want you to speak to us now, Lord. We thank you now. Before we ask you of anything, we thank you. We thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you, God, that you sent your son, Jesus, Father, to die on the cross for our sake. Thank you, Jesus, for being a willing participant. You said no man take your life. You lay it down, and you're able to pick it back up again. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for drawing us to Jesus and reminding us of what Jesus did for us. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you. Thank you, Holy God. God, for all that you have done. We worship you. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you glory for our salvation. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for claiming us. Thank you for claiming us as your children. Thank you, God, for claiming us as your children. Father, we, we're grateful that we can be called a child of God. We're grateful, Father, that we can call you our Father. We're grateful, God, tonight that we are able to call you Father. We're grateful tonight that we are your children, and we're not your children because of what we've done. We we're children because of your Bounding and your and your wonderful love for us. God, we are grateful tonight. And God, once again, before we ask you of anything, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. We thank you, God. Glory to Jesus. You kept us all week long. We thank you. You kept us all week long. We thank you. You provided for us all week long, and we thank you. You allowed us to be here tonight, all, and you, we thank you. We give you honor, glory, and praise. There is no other God beside you. We worship you tonight. We give you glory. Glory, honor, and praise. You are the only God. You are the only God. Kings have to bow down to you. Ah, oh, we thank you, Lord. Ah, oh, governments and rulers and systems have to bow down to you. But you are the only God, and you reign supreme. You rule and you super rule. And we say thank you, Lord. We come to you tonight, ah, oh, bringing this this world that is so that is so broken and divided and this world that is filled with so much hate and rage and violence and, and bloodshed and war and we bring this broken and sick world to you trusting that you're able to work it out we pray God for those war torn places we pray tonight for Ukraine and we pray tonight for Israel, Palestine Russia, Gaza, Sudan, all those places that are dealing with war and bloodshed God of peace intervene Jehovah Shalom intervene Prince of Peace intervene God we pray you have your way now, but we pray that you bring peace to those places. God, we know you're able to work it out. You are a God of peace. Come on, have your way now. Have your way now in those places, Father. We pray for Haiti now. The gangs have taken over. We pray tonight, Lord, that you would stand by God in the name of Jesus. I pray God for peace and 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 and, and for and for concord to come now. I bind any discord and division, God, in the name of Jesus. And I pray God that you would have your way now in the name of Jesus. Come on, Holy Ghost, stir. Come on, Holy Ghost, stir. Come on, Holy Ghost, stir now. Come on, Holy Ghost, come on and stir. Have your way now, God. We pray tonight, Lord, have mercy for all of those nations. We pray for our own nation tonight. We pray. God for our president, touch him in all his ways, give him wisdom now. We pray God for our vice president, touch her in all her ways, give her wisdom now. We pray God that you would bless all government officials, mayors, governors, God, give them wisdom now in the name of Jesus. We pray God that you would bless, bless now, bless now, bless judicial system in the name, bless the judicial system in the name of Jesus, bless the executive in the name of Jesus, bless legislative in the name of Jesus. Come on, God, be wisdom to our leaders. You tell us, the, you tell us Lord, at the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, Father. So we pray, God, that there be a fearing of you, a reverence of you, so that they may get that wisdom in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we come tonight 
praying for those that are sick, not only in their bodies, but those in their minds and in their spirits. We pray tonight for those that are sick in their bodies. We pray, God, the name just continue to go on. We pray, God, for Miss Lucille, all touch her in her body tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray for my great-grandmother, Mrs. Maddie Giles, touch her in her body tonight. We come against sickness. We pray, God, for Mrs. Jura Mallory, 99 years of age, and you've kept her this long, and we're thankful. We pray that you touch her now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for her now. We thank you for Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Connie Hilton, God. You blessed her 98 years of life this past week. Uh, this past week, We thank you, God, for that. We thank you for her life. Continue to strengthen her and bless her now. We pray, God, for... Uh, we pray, God, for Miss Vicki Griffin, continue to strengthen her and her body, God, in the name of Jesus. Stand by her, God, in the name, alleviate any pain, give us strength now. We pray right now for Elder Deborah Harris, God, touch her now, give us strength in her body. We pray for her mother now, touch her now, give us strength in her body. Sustain her now, Lord. We pray, God, for once she always has to lift up Miss Louise, God, give us strength in her body now, Lord, help in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Bishop Barbara Farmer, give us strength now. We pray for healing now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we ask that you touch her now in all her ways. Guard her, God, in the name of the Lord. We pray tonight, God, that you would bless Dr. Edith Marino. Touch her now, God, in the name of Jesus. Guard her in all her ways, Father. Strengthen her in her body. We come against sickness now, Father. We pray for all of those sick in their bodies. We come against those. We come against those cancers that are that are that, that are trying to take those who are dealing with it under. We come against cancer now in the name of Jesus. Cancer, we call you under subjection now in the name of Jesus. I say, cancer, we call you under subjection subjection in the name of Jesus. I say cancer, we call you under subjection in the name of Jesus. You can't have that one now. We pray for Mrs. Eileen Miller, God. Come on, touch now in the name of Jesus. Come on now, have your way now in the name of Jesus. We come against cancer cells right now in the name of Jesus. We come against cancer cells in the name of Jesus. They are drying up now in the name of Jesus. I said they are drying up now in the name of Jesus. And we decree and we declare that they're drying up now in the name of Jesus. Hey God, we thank you. Come Come on, you slew foot devil, we bind you now. Come on, you slew foot devil, we bind you now. Ah, we come against those sick in their minds tonight. We come against the pressures and anxieties. We come against the pressures and anxieties. You said, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make our request known to you. Lord, we come against the pressures now. Come on now, rock. come on now, roam through the land, Lord. And we come against the pressure now. We come against the pressure now. And Lord, we pray that they turn it over now. We come against suicidal demons from hell, and we call you under subjection right now. Ah, oh, you can't have that one. Take your hands off. Our life is too sacred, and life is too precious. In the name of Jesus, I said, I command you to take your hands off. Ah, oh, suicidal demon, take your hands off. Suicidal demon, take your hands off. Ah, oh, you can't have that one. I bind that spirit of suicide. I bind spirits of alcoholism because they're depressed. I bind the spirit of smoking because they're depressed. I bind the spirit of drugs because they're depressed. Ah, they will not become an addict in the name of Jesus. I said, I bind depression. I, I bind family traumas now. I pray God that they be healed now in the name of Jesus. Ah, people dealing with anxieties and depressions and mental illnesses because of family traumas and people burying stuff and all of that. I said, I come against it now, devil. Take your hands off in the name of Jesus. Ah, we call you, we send you notice now, devil. Ah, take your hands off now in the name of Jesus. I said, take your hands off, devil, in the name of Jesus, and put your hands on it, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Put your hands on it, Jesus. Intervene, 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 intervene. And God, we thank you tonight. We pray now, Lord, that you will bless those six spiritually, those that don't know you, that they come to know you. Come on, come on now. Come on now. Devil, you blinded them too long now. Come on, let them know that you're Lord Jesus. Let them know that you're Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray now that you would intervene. Those that don't know you, that they come to know you, that their testimony might be falling in love with you. It's the best thing they've ever done. And we decree and declare that this next generation will not go to hell. Ah, Lord, have mercy. We thank you, God, now that they're coming back. They're coming back. Lord, have mercy. They will not go astray. They will not go astray. That the millennials and the Gen Z and the Gen Alpha and 
and all of those, uh, they're not going to run out. They're not going to run out on the Lord and they're not going to drop the faith, but they will rise up boldly and say that some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. God, we come against it now. We come, devil, we come against the hand. We we come against your hand, devil. We come against the hand that you have put against our youth and against the next generation. Devil, take your hands off. You can't have the next generation. Devil, take your hands off. You can't have the next generation. God, we pray that you protect our next generation. Protect their going out and their coming in as they go to and fro school. God, we pray that you bless them now and that you would strengthen them in the name of Jesus and that you would help them now. Look, we pray now that there will be a remnant in these generations that will hold up Jesus. There will be a remnant ah, that will hold up you, Lord. And we pray, God, that there will not be a falling away now. We ask God that there will be people people, people that will rise up and proclaim you. Come on, devil, take your hands off our children. Ah, we bind the the, the, the weed and, and all of that that looks attractive. Ah, we bind the smoking that looks attractive. We bind the street life that looks attractive. And we ask God that you get in their head that there's no better life uh, than living for you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I said, God we, God, we bind the street life now. Come on now, come on now, devil. Come on now, devil, take your hands off. Ah, we bind the street life now. Hey, God, we bind the street life. We bind the illegal money now. Hey, 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 hey. We bind the illegal money now. Go, come on now. Devil, take your hands off. I said, God, have your way now. Come on, intervene, 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 intervene now in the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, come on, Lord, prove yourself now, Lord. Prove yourself, prove yourself, prove yourself. Ah, oh, it seemed like the heathen has it, but God, we know you're still God. Even though it may seem like at some points we don't see you, but Lord, we know you're still God. Come on now, have your way now, have your way, have your way. Prove yourself now, Lord. Prove yourself, prove yourself so that they won't say you're not God. Prove yourself now. Prove yourself. Take your hand off the next generation, devil. Ah, we proclaim they belong to God and we decree and declare, devil, you can't have them. You won't 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 have them them. in the name of Jesus. I say, God, I say, God, arrest them. Arrest them in your love. Arrest them in your peace. Arrest them till they have to surrender. Arrest them till they have to say yes. Arrest them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, until they say, what must I do to be saved? Come on now. Devil, you can't have the next generation. It seems like you're raging, but you can't have the next generation. Devil, I, th- I know you may think that you got it, but our God is still seated on the throne. Ah, oh, devil, come on here. Don't you get happy now. Ah, oh, our God is still sitting on the throne. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, oh, Lord, help us to fight now. Help us to fight, Lord. We thank you. Oh, we're not fighting this thing alone. Ah, oh, we're, we're in a spiritual warfare right here, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we're wrestling Wrestling against, we're wrestling against principalities. We're wrestling against powers. We're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places, God. Lord, help us to fight. Devil, you can't have our household. Devil, you can't have our children. Devil, you can't have the grandchildren. Ah, devil, take your hands off now. Ah, we command you to take your hands off. Give them a taste for you, Lord. Have mercy. Give them a taste for your love, Jesus. Give them a taste for you, God. Give them a taste for you. Ah, ah. Let the taste for that, whatever that thing is, let it go. And give them a taste for you. Give them a taste for you. Let them know that you love them. Let you know that you love them so much that you sent Jesus. And Jesus, and Jesus, let them know that you love them so much that you died for them. You willingly gave up your life to save them. Holy Ghost. Remind them of what Jesus did. Comfort them in the name of the Lord. Be with every every unbeliever tonight. Visit them. Protect them. Be with every pastor and minister and leader. Protect them from every distraction and hindrance in the name of Jesus. Father, be with every Christian tonight. Protect them from anything that that, that would try to tempt them away from you. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. So God, we call for your sovereign intervention. 
we know that you will show yourself. You will show yourself because your name is here. And you're doing this for your name's sake. Your name is here. Lord, have your way now. Take your hands off our households. Take your hands off the future generations. Take your hands off our lineages. Take your hands, God, and take your hands off, devil, and put your hands on God. Put your hands on God. Put your hands on the next generation, God. Cover them, sustain them, be with them. They're losing their lives in the streets because they think that that street life is something. But God, I pray that you pull them in. Call them in, call them in, pull them in, Lord. Draw them close. Draw them close. Get them close. Get, get, them, get them close, Jesus. Get them close. Get them close. Get them close. Lord, I pray that you have your way, Jesus. And I ask that you be with us individually. Touches and guard us. We pray for peace now. What happened on the other day, as the Muslims were celebrating the Eid, should not have happened. And while we may not believe the same thing, that should not have happened. And Lord, we pray, God, that there be an ending to all violence, senseless violence. And so we pray for that community and those traumatized by it. And Lord, we ask that you would have your way now. Strengthen and support all of us. Guide us, be our strength and our stay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be most gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give all of you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all and God keep you is my prayer. We'll be back here again on, uh, on Sunday. Um, we will not have service on Sunday. Again, mark my words. We will not have service on Sunday at 10 a.m. We won't. Why? Because I'll be preaching at my church on Sunday at 11 a.m. All right. And so so those times, you know, so I'll be in sync and, and you know, to be honest, so I can be on time, praise the Lord. Uh, we're not going to have service at 10 a.m. on Sunday, uh, but we'll be together at 11 a.m. Praise the Lord. There, that service will be live streamed, so I'll just share it on whatever page you're watching this on, and I'll be preaching there at 11 a.m. All right. So God bless you on this coming Sunday. God bless you. And God keep you as my prayer it should be all of our prayers. Stay strong with the Lord. Pray. This, is, this world is in trouble. If you don't see that, you must be crazy. This world is in trouble. But we do believe we serve a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. God bless you and God keep you as my prayer. And should be all of our prayers. God bless you.